Hey, Slick Talkers, thank you so much for tuning into this podcast, and I know that if you love this show, you'll also love my morning show called Good Morning Hospitality with my co-hosts Michael Golden and Brandy Canale as we spend 30 minutes every Monday morning to dive into the industry's top latest news and trending topics. So go check it out on wherever you find your podcasts at Good Morning Hospitality, and you can live stream with us on Monday mornings on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and of course, YouTube. Now, I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast where we discuss all things hospitality, hotels, and business. You can find us online at slicktalkthepodcast.com and on every podcast listening platform. Welcome back to Slick Talk, everybody. Um, this is now season two, episode one. Super thankful to end season one with 15 episodes and over a thousand listeners as of yesterday, February 8th. I'm pretty excited. Also, I just turned 24 on February 6th. So thanks for making my 24th year uh, off to a great start, everybody. I also had a really good birthday to everyone who's curious. I went out to dinner and did some shopping and uh, went out and had a few drinks and had a good time. Uh, good night. So anyways, welcome back to the Slick Talk podcast. I'm still working on, like, for all my consistent fans and listeners out there, uh, I'm thinking I'm just going to change the sleeping in on Slick Talk. It makes a little bit more catchy of a tune, but we'll see. Um, last episode, I talked about the Hospitality First feature, uh, Hospitality Spotlight feature, which is out in Cannon Beach, Oregon, Martin North Hospitality out there uh, with their properties. Awesome stuff. So check them out. Check out the episode on my website. And then um, for this episode, I really want to dive into, um, you know, season two, episode one. Let's kind of dive into some some deep topics, something that I haven't been trained on 100% personally yet. Um, I've been through some Marriott training on this topic itself, but um, I believe this is something that for the next year, five years, 10 years, for however long this uh, crime and organization uh, is running, this is going to be an to- uh, important topic that hotel people and personnel, uh, hoteliers, owners, everybody needs to take serious and has a big impact on, and that is um, safety, signs, and security. Uh, and this also kind of ties in with sex trafficking as well. And, you know, as a staff member of a hotel, you really get to see a lot. And I don't know. Um, if it's just me, but before I got into hotels, I was really bad at um, remembering faces. You know, it's like, oh, I could see somebody and totally forget, see them again two weeks, a month, a year down the road, and not even remember. Um, but as I've, you know, kind of gotten my my bearings and taken off the training wheels and kind of gotten my feet wet in the industry, especially for my first property being a 700 plus hotel room uh, hotel that you may see a lot of faces, but you will not forget many. Um, I remember just working in the lobby. It was packed full of people, hundreds of people for a convention, checking in, going to the restaurant, having a drink, uh, heading up to their room, getting their car from valet, all sorts of stuff. And a face, um, you know, faces, certain situations, the words you hear, the sounds you're experiencing at that time became very hard to forget. Um, you, you, you saw someone once you would recognize when you saw them again. Um, so that for me was kind of a cool skill development, also kind of just something that happened. Um, but I believe as a front desk agent, a valet member, a a bellman, um, bus boy, server, bartender, especially bartenders, actually, um, you should really be able to uh, dive in and start doing a little bit more facial, you know, facial recognition, um, just by remembering certain things, kind of taking notes mentally on what you're seeing and what you're hearing because, you know, sex trafficking, um, and other safety concerns, um, in the industry, uh, can really be prevented if we just take note of it and maybe document it or mention it to a higher up supervisor or manager, um, but the cool thing is, is that, you know, right now we're in a time and age where, you know, there's all sorts of statistics on sex trafficking and um, safety of humans and Marriott, which 
as many of you guys know, if you you know follow anything in the industry, is that Marriott now is part of Starwood. Well, owns Starwood, Ritz Carlton Rewards. So they're a pretty big chain from not only their portfolio but other brand portfolios that they've absorbed in the in the past. Um, you know, they're a pretty big chain. They have you know thousands of properties, hundreds of thousands of rooms around uh, the world, and um, so. Marriott has had about <clears throat> 500,000 uh, associates uh, complete their um, sex traffic, uh, you know, recognition sign training program. And uh, that's 500,000 people. That's a significant amount. Um, you know, if just one of them, which um, they've reported already that uh, across many of their properties that associates have already spotted um a lot of different, uh, not just sex trafficking, but a lot of different criminal activities such as drug trafficking and um, all sorts of other stuff um, have been spotted and already reported to the police and has, there's been action taken. Um, so this training is not only just for, you know, the minor drugs and alcohol, but it also goes to the, you know, the human uh, side of things, especially when we're in a human industry, that's pretty huge. And to, um, you know, be able to impact someone's life uh, in a positive way by, you know, noticing the signs and not being, um, you know, just dumbfounded and not paying attention, I guess. Uh, so it's pretty cool. And so there's a couple of key takeaways, um, you know, from this kind of training uh, that, you know, you can watch for warning signs, uh, which includes, you know, like excessive requests for linens and towels, um, a bunch of like maybe not in underage but close to underage intoxicated people um you know guests wearing inappropriate clothing multiple men being escorted uh one at a time to a room you know other behaviors that seem out of place you can i don't know from me you can't just judge somebody off of their clothing and you know all this other stuff but um when you interact with so many people in such little time or you know, such a little time of day, let's say you do an eight hour shift and you work there, you know, that same shift, uh, shoot, maybe for two years or so, you, you really start to one, meet tons of different people. Um, the way they speak, their body language, the, the way they look when they're not on drugs or when they're on drugs or if they're drunk, or they're not drunk. You start to see a lot of things and, you know, interact with a lot of people from different cultures, uh, different languages, religions, uh, sexual backgrounds, everything. And so um, you really start to develop a gut. And I, you know, we're all human. We're not perfect. But trusting that gut becomes a huge thing where you make a call. And if it's a wrong call, it's a wrong call. I'd rather have a wrong call um, a few times and have multiple really good calls because I trust in my gut. Um, you know, that's just part of the game. You can't tell for sure unless it's like obviously right in front of you on camera. You see it before your eyes and all that good stuff. Um, so there's a couple of signs that you can just kind of pay attention, especially when if you see the same kind of guests or the same guests multiple times and you can tell differences. Um, so most victims, um, most, not all, most victims uh, do not self-identify as victims and will not be the ones to point out their abusers. So really, they're, um, I remember one of the key training members for uh, sex trafficking was usually when a guy, um, you know, someone is buying or selling um, a woman for sex, um, usually the guy is the one doing all the talking. Um, as a front desk agent, I always try to communicate with both my guests, whether they're husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, um, wife, wife, husband, husband, whatever it is. Um, they got kids. They don't have kids. I try to interact with everybody, you know, make little comments, have a conversation, get a smile, get a laugh. Um, and you can tell, like, let's say you got a guy and a girl checking in and you're making a comment to both of them, but only he's responding and she's barely making eye contact. Maybe it looks a little hesitant to, to get closer to the front desk or to say anything, make any, you know, whatever it may be. Um, you can kind of pick up on that. And, you know, some, sometimes it's just people are shy, which is cool. I'm totally down with that. Um, you be you, but, um, you can tell with the, the gentleman, if he's cutting her off or if he's 
not letting her speak at all, or she's just too scared to speak. Um, and she's kind of throwing a red flag out there. You can kind of tell. So, um, just being aware of certain signs, um, reading body language is really huge. Tone of voice, eye contact, all sorts of stuff. Um, during special events, um, usually like sport championships or, um, you know, big event going on. I don't know. It could be a rally. It could be a March. It could be a sporting event. It could be a big hotel uh, conference, whether you have like a big group in house or not. Uh, whether there's high foot traffic, usually there's, um, you know, one or two people that can sneak on through and um, not be noticed. So it's always, you know, good to pay attention during those heightened uh, foot traffic times. Um, getting on uh, employees on board is really huge. Uh, you know, there's a lot of properties or a lot of, I shouldn't say properties, there's a lot of uh, staff and hotel um, employees that are kind of just, it's a paycheck. They're not, you know, me and Adam Knight have talked about this many times um, in our, you know, three podcast episode series where we've kind of di- dove into, you know, employers and employees, what they're looking for. And a lot of people at hotels, man, they're, they're just looking for a paycheck and that's okay. Like, I guess that's, you know, that's what they want to do. That's how they, they don't want to, you know, strive to do uh, something or do something they love. But um, really getting the employees on board, especially the ones that care, the ones that, you know, feel that they have uh, been invested in and are invested into the property. Um, getting them on board to really take the training seriously, to um, acknowledge the signs, to really be vigilant and take note and be aware and and do the extra things where they can um, possibly, you know, save a life. And it's uh, all a part about our industry. We're all about human connection. We're all about humans, uh, you know, guys having a great time. We want to, rep- you know, we have a lot of pride in our brand and our property and what we offer and, you know, the the amenities we're able to provide. And so getting those type of people on board is huge and it's key because they're going to notice. They're going to notice when there's, you know, a leaf on the, on the ground in the lobby. There's going to notice when there's a piece of trash that, you know, isn't where is a, uh, where it's not supposed to be. They're going to notice the, the sheet is a little wrinkled. They're going to notice everything in the room and the property. And so having them on board is really key for being able to help with um, sex trafficking and the awareness signs that they need to be aware of. And to also teach it to the staff that maybe don't care as much or are kind of part-time on your property. Um, Another good point just to kind of go into this that we've talked about, you know, managers as uh, Adam and I um, on previous episode talked about managers and their role. Um, uh, educate managers on how to respond to employees who suspect trafficking and activity. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so yeah, if you're like a director, uh, you know, director of rooms or managing director or whatever it may be, um, owner of a hotel, um, this is, you know, this is a topic that you should be aware of, especially if you're in that kind of area. Like if you're, on a main highway that could have a lot of people come in and off from different, you know, countries and whatever, uh, be aware that, you know, there's trafficking uh, going on, whether it's for sex or for drugs. Um, but you know, this is something that represents, you know, if you get on the news, your brand's going to be a notice. So do every, um, precaution you can to train your staff, um, train your managers on how to respond when they, you know, have an employee come up to them, uh, thinking that there's a couple signs of, you know, trafficking, just kind of taking that extra step. Um, yes, there's so many important things as a, uh, brand manager, as an owner, uh, you know, you got these revenue meetings and marketing and sales and, you know, dealing with all sorts of budgets and, um, disciplinary actions and all sorts of stuff that go on at a hotel. Um, and that's just a third of what I just mentioned. Um, yeah, you have a lot going on. But at the same time, you know, you really should care about a lot that's going on with your guests. There's a lot that, you know, they have lives as well. They have families. They have, um, you know, loved ones. They, whatever it may be. Um, So definitely be focused on how, you know, preventing these types of of, uh, incidents. Um, 
I personally, I have, I'm, uh, you know, the seventh child of seven. I have five sisters. I have a twin brother. Um, I have nine nieces and nephews. So yeah, I come from a big family, um, a lot of women in my family. And the way I was kind of raised, you know, was to stand up for them and never hurt a woman, never, you know, hit her, never, you know, you know, always treat her with respect, open the door, um, all, all that stuff, you know? And so for me, just knowing that, you know, my nieces and nephews and, uh, sisters and just family members out there in the world. Um, I, you know, if someone was trained and, you know, was able to pick up on signs of that, I would be forever grateful and it would make all, you know, all the difference for, uh, for me and for my life and family. If, uh, you know, people just paid attention and did more than their job, you know, went above and beyond. And that's one of the things you can do. Um, it's just training your employees and your staff really how to handle the situations, how to you know report it, how to acknowledge them, and uh, really, um, industry cooperation is just key. I think you know Marriott, you know, donated its training to the American Hotel and Lodging Association, which then sold it and donates all the proceeds to anti-trafficking efforts. So this isn't something that just big brand names are doing. Like, yeah, Marriott does it, and they have all these other brands and soft brands underneath their belt. But, man, there are so many things that boutique properties can do. Just small trainings once a month or uh, for an hour. There are so many things that we could do. Um, You know, the Internet is full of capabilities. You know, YouTube, you know, God bless America, we have YouTube because it's free. And you can look up videos, the Marriott videos, I'm pretty sure are on there. Or if you're a part of the American Hotel Lodging Association, buy the freaking videos and training and do it as a team, as a staff. That's just one thing I, I believe, you know, there's so many things we can do. <sighs> okay, kind of enough on the sex trafficking. It kind of gets into just, you know, a really, it's a big, it's a big issue and there's a lot um you know, that can be covered and there's a lot that can be done, but really it's just, just get trained, get involved and be vigilant. That's really all, all it's going to start out. You start doing those three things guarantee, you know, we're going to start seeing things differently. We're going to have a new perspective. We're going to have a better communication with our property and our guests. Um, <clears throat> so it's pretty, it's pretty important. Um, so I kind of also want to talk <clears throat> just about the other, you know, we got safety, science, security. Um, I personally believe, you know, obviously as a hotel, your property needs to be properly, um, you know, sustained with equipment uh, such as, you know, the defibrillators and uh, all sorts of um, CPR and first aid kits uh, that you can do. So obviously making the equipment noticeable, uh, available, you know, easy to use and, you know, providing that training is huge. Um, I think, you know, at least one to two, depending how big your property is, uh, one to two people in every department should be trained in first aid. Um, whether that's a volunteered position or a voluntold position, uh, if you're in the military, you know what voluntold is, whereas you're told what to do and you have no choice and you didn't volunteer, but you're voluntold. Um, so whether, yeah, whether it's a volunteer or voluntold position, really uh, two people in every department or one, depending how big your guys' uh, hotel is or company should be trained um, in first aid just for one, the reassurance for guests, you know, having that, you know, anybody in the hotel, can help if any of their coworkers or a guest has any kind of a medical emergency that they're able to provide some assistance uh, before 911 is called is a huge thing and it should be a big uh, you know pride boost for the hotel um, that we're able to not only take care of our guests when they're staying with us uh, with their room and their food and you know their spa treatments but we're also to take care of their 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 physical health if anything goes wrong and we need to call an emergency. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of issues with insurance and liability and stuff like that, but just, you know, getting that, 
extra cushion underneath is really helpful, I think. And that's just that's just me. I've been, you know, CPR uh, certified. I've been in many situations um, when I was a camp counselor and uh, through my uh, military training where I've had to use my CPR and medical training um, on, on a, on a guest or a camper or whatever it may be. And it's, um, been really helpful because, you know, we're able to prevent, um, many, you know, life threatening injuries or, uh, scenarios where, um, you know, we could have lost somebody. So super thankful for the training and it just helps, uh, you know, uh, everyone in that state of mind, you know, some, some trauma, traumatic events, um, just having somebody there that's able to be under pressure and get it done. So that is kind of like the major sum of this, you know, podcast episode. Again, my episodes aren't very long, but I just try, I want to get some good content out there for you guys because there's so many things in this hotel and hospitality industry, you know, that we can, do to improve and remember, you know, it never hurts to go over some training that you've already had once before. Um, you know, refreshers are great. Um, there's so much exciting stuff going on, uh, with tech and, um, you know, for me, I'm a huge numbers and analytic guy. So seeing, uh, strategies and patterns in the industry, whether, um, it does with room revenue and guest staying, uh, you know, guest satisfaction scores, uh, the way people are booking through third party or direct, uh, the marketing strategies that are used to incorporate that. For me, those are the exciting things. And there's so much uh, going on in this day and age. You know, it's 2019, and I believe we're just beginning. You know, the analytics uh, for the industry are already, uh, you know, looking at the numbers for 2019, and it's looking very positive. So there's so much going on. Um, and again, like I said, this episode is pretty short. You know, we're coming up on 20 minutes and I just wanted to, you know, let you guys know there's, there's a lot of things going on in the works, um, creating more content, um, deeper content for those who are in the industry, who are young, hungry, uh, or maybe just looking for a quality podcast to listen to. Um, I will be trying to provide every single ounce of that. Uh, for you. So I want to make a challenge out there. I have over a thousand listeners in America and in other countries as well. Please, if you are listening to this episode right now, I want you to go to my website, go to the about, contact me with a podcast subject you want to be covered on. Uh, You maybe want to be featured on an episode. Hit me up, message me on my website, go to slicktalkthepodcast.com and go to the about page, message me. I want to be able to, you know, talk on the topics that you guys want to hear. There's a thousand plus of you out there. So let's talk on Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast, and get some quality content. Um, I'm looking to get, you know, Adam Knight and I have had a great repetition um, with the podcast and has some really positive numbers and feedback from uh, our episodes together. So, of course, check out his company. Uh, great guy, great. Uh, you know, we've become friends through this process. So really good stuff. Looking forward to having him back on the show. Uh, hopefully sometime soon in season two. Um, you know, there's a lot of exciting things for those of you who know, I own and operate, uh, open road hospitality, which is a Airbnb hotel guest survey, revenue analytic website, marketing consulting firm. And, uh, really, working on some stuff I'm trying not to announce just yet, but, um, you know, I'm partnering up with a marketing agency uh, where we're going to be designing websites for hotels and vacation rentals. I'll be also providing, you know, social media, um, and marketing, uh, you know, stuff with him, them as well. So really excited. Um, and some more stuff that I just, I can't announce just yet because it's not finalized, but it's on the way. So people be patient with me. I appreciate you tuning in. Again, I'm challenging you. If you're in the industry, if you're listening to this, message me. If you're a friend in the industry and I've met you uh, through my time in Spokane and here on the coast or, or, or Seattle, direct message me on my social media, text, you know, Snapchat, Facebook, all that good stuff. I appreciate all of you guys listening. Um, 
you know, if you're a manager at a property, take some steps, train your staff, get everyone on board. Let's, you know, prevent some, uh, some injuries and let's prevent some, you know, lives being ruined through sex and drug trafficking. And let's, uh, you know, be able to save a coworker if we need it. So step up on, um, you know, safety signs and security. Thank you guys for listening again. Appreciate every single one of you. Um, yeah, let's get it. Enjoy. Hey, everybody. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sleeping In on Slick Talk. I want to announce something really quickly that has just formed recently in the last week or so, but I've partnered up with a coffee roaster, and I will be selling their product online on my website for a great deal. So if you guys are interested in having good coffee and living in the United States of America, that's where I can have it shipped to. Uh, please feel free to go to the website and check out our online store. It's going to be up soon. Um, if you have any questions about the coffee, go ahead and message me through the uh, website as well. I'll get back to you guys, but I'm really excited because really good coffee uh, really helps the guest experience at your property, whether it's a vacation rental or a hotel. And along with you know revenue and analytics and marketing, I believe these are the three peers of success for a hotel and vacation rental. So I'm super excited to provide this extra quality product with my services as well. So thank you for listening to Slick Talk today. Hope you guys enjoy. And if you enjoy coffee, go ahead and check it out online on slicktalkthepodcast.com slash store. Thank you so much for listening. We love your support and want to provide the best we can to all our listeners. So please find us online, social media, and on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and Google Podcast. What's up, everybody? If you've gotten this far into the episode of Slick Talk, the Hospitality Podcast, then you are amazing. And thank you so much for tuning in. We want to send you two places really quickly. If you can, check out the show notes and click the hospitality.fm link. Check out all of our other shows on the podcast network. And don't forget, if you have someone that you want to hear on the podcast, then fill out the guest fill out form so that way we can get them on the show. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy another episode of Slick Talk, the Hospitality Podcast.